The Jaintia Hills, the primary habitat of the Jaintias, is a pristine terrain of awe-inspiring gorges and lofty mountain peaks. Imbibed in myth, these stone slabs are believed to protect the Jaintias. There are four such stone slab guards. Folklores have it that these guards warned the Jaintias of foreign invasions. This peaceful land of 12 Dolores, however, was suddenly annexed by the British on the 15th March 1835. A Dolois is an administrative unit and the Jaintias had 12 such units. Annexation of the Jaintia Hills was a shock to the freedom-loving Jaintias. Humiliation by the British reached a peak and the Jaintias could take it no more. Yu Kyang Nongba, a leader among the Jaintias, took the lead and rose against the British. In a meeting in 1861, Yu Kyang Nongba took the oath to drive the British out of their land. Convinced, the people endorsed Yu Kyang Nongba to wage a war against the British. Yu Kyang Nongba and his men fought a fierce battle against the formidable British troops. Outnumbered, the Jaintia rebellion was quelled by the British in 1862. Captured by the British, Yu Kyang Nongba was hanged on the dawn of 30th December 1862. From the scaffold, Yu Kyang Nongba spoke to his countrymen loud and clear. If my face turns eastwards when I die on the road, we shall be free again within a hundred years. If it turns westwards, we shall be enslaved forever. Yu Kyang Nongba became a martyr to the Jaintias. The monument at Sintuxiar is a tribute by the Jaintias to their immortal martyr. This is a patriotic song in adoration of their beloved martyr, Yu Kyang Nong Ba, who got mandate and blessings of the God to lead the Jaintias when he dived into the Sintuxia River and got a golden lotus. The Jaintias, who call themselves Pnars, believe that the name Jaintia may have been derived from Jaintiapur, the old capital of the Jaintias, now in Bangladesh. Jaintia Hills was originally known as Rikhada Dolois or the land of the 12 Dolois. When Rikhada Dolois became a kingdom, then it was renamed as Jaintia Kingdom. After the Jaintia Kingdom was annexed by the British, the word kingdom was dropped and the land was renamed as Jaintia Hills. Archery, which has been a national sport of the Jaintias from time immemorial, reflects that the Jaintias probably originally gathered food by hunting before entering India. Deep-rooted discipline among the Jaintias made them successful immigrants to India.
originally inhabiting on the banks of the river Mekong in Cambodia, they migrated to India via Burma in various batches. Each batch had a name like Jowai, Umwi, Changpung and the like. The name of the batch was carried to name the location where the batch finally settled in the Jainta Hills in India. This is Jowai, the present day headquarter of the Jainta Hills district of Meghalaya. Jaintia people, of course, they consist of the name of Jaintia. I do not know actually because all the names of the places also, those people there in our ancestors, they call it like that. So Jaintia consists of the whole subdivision comprising, you see, Warpanar, they call it, and Markasi, that side, to the southern part, uh, joining Bangladesh, and then to the north again, joining that Assam, and we call like that. Today, Joai is not only a commercial hub of the Jaintia Hills district, but also is the cultural capital of the Jaintias. <laughs> the Jaintias speak in their own dialect having no script. In schools, Khasi dialect which has a script is used as a vernacular. The principal clan systems of Liban, Kima, War, Nongpa, Gadpo and the like constitute the Jaintias of Meghalaya. The mother is the originator of the clan. There is no social hierarchy, thus giving the Jaintias society a deep cohesion. The costumes and ornaments of the Jaintias have a rich taste and variety. There is a different costume for each occasion like marriage, social festival, community gathering, religious meeting, working and the like. Originally skilled traders, a vast majority of rural Jaintias primarily depends on agriculture. Like the Garos, the Jaintias practice chum cultivation, a poor means of harnessing the land resources. Besides rice, they grow maize, pulses, potatoes, turmeric and roots of wild creepers. Women participate actively in agriculture pursuits.
paucity of jhum lands are gradually forcing the women folk to take up jobs in construction sites such as buildings and roadways development is catching up young youths working in various developmental works are common sight in the jaintia hills coal deposits in the jaintia hills have boosted the local economy Coal mines here supply a good deal of coal to the whole northeast India and to Bangladesh. Poor mining methods, however, pose risks and hazards to coal miners. Forests are abundant in the Jaintia Hills. Forests provide the Jaintias with plentiful of bamboos, wood, various roots, honey and other forest resources. Indiscriminate tree felling is not only causing deforestation in the Jaintia Hills but also is disturbing the entire ecosystem. Sawmills have mushroomed, clearly a result of improper and overutilization of forest resources. Majority of the Jaintias live in villages. Yet, villages are small. It is not surprising because the total Jaintia population is about 200,000. Most villages are blessed with electric supply lines and solar packs. Natural falls water has been cleverly harnessed by the villagers through slope channels. In a Jaintia village, the Daloi or the village chief normally owns the largest house. The institution of matrilineity is perhaps nowhere more conspicuous than in the Jaintia hills and in the neighboring Khasi hills. The mother is the fountainhead and is the sole custodian of all movable and immovable properties. Custodianship is transgressed through the youngest daughter. She always lives in the ancestral home while other married brothers and sisters move to their new homes. The mother always controls the household and all ceremonies that are conducted in the house. The Jaintias are a loving and a lovable people. They always treat guests with great warmth. A traditional mode of welcoming a guest is by offering ko, that is, betel leaves and betel nuts artfully placed on a metal platter. Males are always identified with strength and warriorship. Placing a bow and an arrow beside a newborn male baby is therefore a custom.
Knowing each other is always a prerequisite before a marriage takes place. The concept of marriage in the Jaintia society is one of cohabitation and mutual understanding. Marriage within a clan is considered an unexcusable offence. Monogamy is the accepted norm. Christianity has taken deep roots among the Jaintias, an obvious result of untiring efforts by Christian missionaries since the British annexation of the Jaintia Hills. This is the Durga temple at Narthyang. The original temple was built by Shutra Singh, a Hindu Jaintya king, some 2000 years ago. Human sacrifice was made to appease the goddess Durga. The British stopped this practice. Not far from the Durga temple you have just seen is this age-old Shiva temple. That the Jaintyas once adopted Hinduism is evident from the Durga and the Shiva temples. The traditional religion of the Jaintyas is called Nyamtre. The first principle of Nyamtre states that one should earn his bread by his own righteousness or the most important belief according to our religion is our Nyamtre, original religion. Because we, we believe that God gave the religion to our people and we are now 16, you see. And seven remain on earth and nine God took with him to heaven. This is the Tiger's Dance. The Tiger's Dance is a traditional dance of the Jaintyas. The dance bears a deep spiritual cohesion with the feelings and belief of the people. In the olden days, whenever a tiger was killed, the whole community worshipped the village deity and performed this dance. Otherwise, they believed the clan would suffer. This rhythmic play dance is very popular among the modern Jaintyas. People participate in this dance to express joy and merriment. The Jaintyas traditionally had a three-tier administrative system, CM ship, Doloyship. and village headmanship. Succession to these offices was based on a hereditary system which passed from the uncle to the nephew. CMship does not exist today but the Doloyship still continues. 
The Jaintia society has always been thoroughly democratic. Each locality has what is called a White House. The community leaders meet here and take unanimous democratic decisions for the welfare of the community. The decisions so taken are clean and bereft of any prejudices. Today, the Autonomous Hills District Council, the so-called ASDC, looks after the administrative, legislative and judiciary affairs of the district. This is a traditional Jaintia house, one among the two left in Joai. Its impressive style shall strike any visitor. Here, you see a rich collection of traditional Jaintia artifacts within the house. Clan marriages are still held within the compounds of this house. This ancient bridge, called Thruumbi Bridge, was built by the Jaintia kings to cross the stream when they shifted their summer capital from Sutanga to Nartia. History has it that this bridge collapsed when a reckless elephant trader led some elephants over the stone bridge on way to Silhet. This bathing ghat at Rupasor was built by the Jaintia king Yulu Lamare. The stone elephant served as a platform for bathing princess to sit upon. These monoliths at Nartyang commemorate the glorious events of the great Jaintya hero, Yumar Bhalanki. They were built between 1500 to 1835 AD. These are the ruins of the summer palace of the Jaintya kings at Nartyang. The palace used to be fortified with fixed cannons, each pointing to a different direction. The Jaintyas, as they transcend from the past to the present, modernity, However, staff has not been able to wash away the great traditional values of